Hello everybody, this is Mr. Rob and welcome back to episode number 26 of the Cleveland Indians franchise here on MLB The Show 21 for the PlayStation 5. Today we have finished the month of June so we're just going to take a live calm look back at the month of June, see what happened, recap our current team, where we stand, as well as Currently, take a look at the all-star voting since that is coming up in 10 days. So if you're excited for this one, make sure you drop a like and subscribe down below, especially if you want more franchise content. 65% of you guys watching this video are not subscribed. All you gotta do is follow those instructions on the screen. Your support would be greatly appreciated. So our Cleveland Indians just finished up the month of June, and here's how the month went. We currently sit 43 and 37 and went 15 and 11 in the month of June. So a pretty solid overall, despite a struggle to end the month. Our Triple A Columbus Clippers, they went 14 and 12, currently sit 42 and 32. They've been in pretty solid shape. But our Akron Rubber Ducks, despite the fact that we killed Erie in that series that we went down to the farm on, they are certainly 25 and 25 and they went 10 and 16 in the month of June. But overall, pretty solid all around. Uh, let's take a look at the players of the month to see who did well. So in the American League, Michael Fulmer, the guy we just saw last episode, he had 17 Ks in his 13 games, 133 ERA. Nelson Cruz, we also saw Nelson Cruz last episode, he had a 347, seven bombs, one of those against us in 27 RBIs. And the rookie of the month goes to Taylor Trammell, the left fielder from Seattle. He had over 301 with three, R three home runs for Seattle. In the National League, Will Smith got your uh, pitcher of the month. He didn't allow a single earned run in 11 games. Christian Yelitz was your player of the month. 392 average, 9 homers, 25 RBIs. And Shogo Akiyama got the rookie of the month. 345, 3 RBIs. I think he got, no, he hasn't got it already. But Shogo Akiyama looking pretty solid for the Cincinnati Reds. Taking a look at the standings now, see how they stayed up. In the American League, the Yankees hold on to first, but only by a half game over the Tampa Bay Rays. In the Central, the Twins lead our division. They took that lead over the White Sox by a game, and there's us five and a half out. In the West, is the Astros sitting 50 and 31. They have an eight and a half game lead over the Athletics. For the wild card, the White Sox and the Rays would have the, the four or five spots. The Red Sox are four, and we're four and a half games back. In the National League, now the Braves have kind of taken sole control of the NL East over 11 game lead over the Phillies. In the Central, the Cubs sit 42 and 39, only three games above 500, but that's enough for first over the Brewers. In the West, the Dodgers have regained the lead in that division, 50 and 30. The Padres only a game back. And the Padres have that wild card spot as well as the Phillies. That shows you how much Braves are dominating. But the Nationals are a half game, and so are the Mets and the Brewers one and a half. So the National League wild card race doing it pretty well down the stretch. Let's take a look at the player stats now. This will be the majority of the episode like it usually is. Uh, we'll start off with our position players and we'll sort it by, I'd like to sort it by position. So we'll talk about position by position. Starting off with catcher, Austin Hedges gets the majority of the uh, looks so far, but it's about a 60-40 split. He's currently injured also, by the way, with a bruised arm. He's been hitting below 200. Uh, not very good hitting wise, but you know he's never been a good hitter. You can see uh, basically always hitting below 200 minus 28, 17 and 18. He's more a defensive catcher. Same thing with Roberto Perez, but he is hitting 254 with eight bombs. Um, so that's good for Perez, but he's also a free agent after this year. And remember, this is the month of the trade deadline, and this is a Cleveland Indian squad that's sitting at about 500. We're not sure if we want to push or not for the playoffs, and we're a small market club, so... Roberto Perez, 86 overall, will probably get a pretty solid contract from somebody. I don't know if we can pay him that. At first base, starting at first base is Josh Naylor, who had a very good month of June. Got his average up to 284, six homers, 34 RBIs. I thought overall he was our best hitter in the month of June. And going into the season, I wasn't sure about first base, who would be the first baseman for this season and seasons to come. And Josh Naylor is really solidifying himself as that first baseman, only 23 years of age. I feel very happy with what he's done this season. We have a backup first baseman in Yu Chang. He's had 121 at bats, kind of average up to 231. Um, he's just a utility infielder. I mean, you can play all positions on the infield. He's been pretty solid when called upon. For second baseman, Cesar Hernandez, it's 234 homers, 21 RBIs. He's had a couple of clutch hits, but a pretty solid defender as well. 
Um, 230 this year, that is down from where he was a season ago. He hit 283 in 2020. Hopefully he can get back to that form. At third base, Jose Ramirez, probably our best hitter overall. 284 average, 21 homers, 57 RBIs. Says, uh, Jose Ramirez is our star. I mean, he is a phenomenal bat. He's actually an underrated fielder as well. He saw had that good play last episode. He's hitting 284, 21 bombs. I hope he gets to the All-Star game. And he's under contract for next year. So it's not like we got to worry about signing him this offseason. Shortstop, St. Andres Jimenez. Uh, he was hitting below 200 coming into this month. And he's really stepped up his game now, hitting 235. Career high by far in home runs with 12. Uh, I was a little reluctant. If you go back and watch the Tyler Freeman prospect spotlight on the down on the farm, I thought Tyler Freeman could soon become that shortstop if Jimenez can't step it up. But Jimenez has really stepped it up, and that kind of helps for Freeman's development. So we don't really got to rush him to the majors. In the outfield, starting in left field, Eddie Rosario is hitting 257 on the season. He's been kind of that third bat that we can rely on. 11 homers, 30 RBIs. Um, but he is also a free agent this year, and he's being paid 8 mil this year. So we'll have to see what we want to do with Rosario. The other Rosario, Ahmed, who has been our leadoff hitter, is hitting 260 now with 5 homers, 23 RBIs. The prize pick in that Francisco Lindor trade. Um, doing pretty decent at the bat, not quite where he was a couple seasons ago, but he's always been, looks like about a 250 to 270 hitter. Um, so we're getting all we can out of Rosario, and he's a pretty solid defender as well. So I've been kind of happy with Rosario. Uh, I would like to maybe see him in the infield more since he can play that position and give some more reps for others in the outfield if need be. Uh, and I like how he has that flexibility. In right field, Fran Mil Ray is hitting 283, 21 homers, 59 RBIs, probably our second best hitter. He was hitter number one, but he didn't have a good June. And his, his average has gone down probably about 15 points. But 21 homers, 59 RBIs, he's on pace for some career highs in both of those categories. And he's under arbitration, so another player that's pretty solid that we can work around. Uh, the players I didn't touch on, Owen Miller, who's had 12 games, he's hitting 195. You saw him in on a down on the farm episode as well. He might be going down to the farm. And then Harold Ramirez has been a backup outfielder, only six at bats, he has one hit, so, um, you know, I don't want to draw any conclusions from him. So that does it for, our, oh, and Bradley Zimmer. Bradley Zimmer, 278. We saw his average in one game go from 210 to 260. So i like to see him get more at-bats. That's kind of what I'm talking about with uh, maybe Rosario playing some infield duty. As far as pitchers go, we'll start with our starting pitchers. So I'll start it with uh, innings pitched. Starting pitcher number one, Shane Bieber, the reigning AL Cy Young winner. He's playing like an AL Cy Young winner again. 154 ERA striking out 137 batters so far that is an average of 11.74 per nine it's not quite where he was last season but Bieber is playing like another starting pitcher Cy Young the only thing that's holding him back is through 16 starts he only has six wins so not sure if Bieber's getting the run support that he deserves our number two who's also been getting some Cy Young recognition that's Aaron Savale he's 11 and 2 with a 224 ERA and a .91 whip He's having himself a career season. He's kind of dipped off in his last start or two. 72 strikeouts, already a career high for him. So it's good that we have a solid one-two punch in Bieber and Savale to build around. And then three, we have Zach Plesak, who's also still only 26 years old. 339 ERA, 71 strikeouts, 103 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's also only 5-5, five five, so he doesn't really get the run support he deserves either, which kind of holds him back from some recognition. But we have a solid 1-2-3 punch in Bieber, Sidvale, and Plesak. Then we get to the number 4 and number 5 pitchers who haven't been as good, specifically Tristan McKenzie. Uh, the flamethrower righty, only 23 years old, has a 452 ERA through his 16 starts. He had a very good shortened COVID campaign. Uh, I really hope he can turn it around. I'm trying to be patient with McKenzie this season. I don't want to send him down if I don't have to, but he's got to start to get that ERA closer to four. In the five spot, we have had Logan Allen for this season. He does have a 303 ERA, and he has a potential at 22 years old, so he could be really, really good, and I think we're starting to see that potential here with his 2021 season. So. Our starting pitching is in a very good spot. 
Then you start to get into the bullpen, which ever since the injury to Classe has not looked very good. Now, I'm going to start off with Jordan Hicks just because he's the one we see the most since acquired from that St. Louis Cardinals trade. And he's been very solid since coming over. He has a 3.45 ERA on the season. 37 strikeouts in about 31 innings is very good. He's my go-to guy in the bullpen. And then we have James Krenchak, who has been our closer, who has 20 saves in his appearances, 2.28 ERA. They have been two solid bullpen pieces. The problem is just everything else. Cal Quantrill has a 2.72 ERA, but you know he hasn't been very good recently, and you've kind of seen that in recent episodes. And then Phil Maton has been downright horrible. 6.94 ERA through 35 innings pitched. Um, and just, he's been giving up a lot more runs and a lot more base hits. So we need someone else we can count on. Nick Whitgren has also been hurt. He's out for another one to two months with a torn finger ligament. Brian Shaw has been terrible in 15 and two thirds innings, 632 ERA. And then Anthony Ghost, we called up, hasn't been very good either. His ERA has just ballooned up to a 736. So we really need some more help in the bullpen other than Hicks and Karinchak. And we can't wait till Nick Whitgren comes back off of the injured list. So that's how our team stands. Uh, in terms of team rankings, uh, batting average, we are sitting at 12th now, which is better where it, than it's been. Uh, runs, we are, let's see, tied for 11th which is not half bad. Home runs, we are fourth. And then in triples, we are first. In doubles, we are eighth. So we're actually pretty good at getting uh, like extra base hits. So that's uh, been a solid, a solid plus. You can see seventh in total bases. Uh, in terms of ERA on the pitching side, we've always been the number one ERA, but we've dropped to number three. So I think, like I said, that's kind of because of that bullpen recently. Uh, strikeouts, we're still very high in strikeouts though, thanks to Bieber's obviously 137 and then in win percentage we are currently the 10th best team in baseball so still on that top third still pushing for a playoff spot you think but have I still don't know should we push for a playoffs of the 43 and 37 I think we should but do we have the money to really go after a game changer so that'll usually do it but July is the all-star month so I do want to take a look at the all-star voting just to kind of see um, where certain players stand Starting in the American League, Ryan Yarbo leads the voting for the American League because he's 14 and 0 with a 189 ERA. Bieber is second, and Savale is fourth. So we might see two Indians pitchers in the All-Star game. In terms of relief pitchers, Matt Foster leads the way with the White Sox, and then closers, Aroldis Chapman is your leading closer getter. James Krenchak is third behind Roberto Osuna as well of the Royals. Catchers, Christian Vasquez of the Red Sox leads. First baseman, Yuli Gurriel, he's in 290 with 12 home runs. Second base is DJ LeMahieu of the New York Yankees. Whit Merrifield also has over 500,000 votes. At third base, Rafael Devers leads. He's hitting 299 with 26 homers, 78 RBIs. He's honestly looking like an MVP candidate. As Jose Ramirez is second, though, so he might also make it. At shortstop, Xander Bogarts leads for Boston. And left field, Jordan Alvarez of the Houston Astros, who mostly plays DH, but I guess he qualifies as a left fielder. Center field, Byron Buxton of the Twins, 295, 14 stolen bases, 19 home runs, a great 5 to a player. And then right field, Framil Reyes, despite his recent struggles, still has a pretty commanding lead in right field, despite Aaron Judge's stats looking very similar to Reyes. In the National League, Blake Snell of the Padres leads, followed by Brandon Woodruff of the Brewers. Bauer of the Dodgers, who is hurt, so Jacob DeGrom of the Mets is third. Relief pitchers, Emilio Pagan of the Padres has a less than one ERA. Closing pitcher, Will Smith, who just got June pitcher of the month. Catcher, Will Smith as well, so double Will Smith. Maybe we'll even see the third Will Smith at the All-Star game, uh, even though I doubt it. He's hitting 302 with 20 home runs. Freddie Freeman, the reigning NL MVP, is your first base getter. Second best, Jeff, Jeff McNeil of the Mets. Third base, Manny Machado, another Padre. Trevor Story of the Rockies is your leading shortstop. Is he going to be on the Rockies for that much longer? That'll be something interesting to watch. Left field, Christian Yelich of the Brewers. Center field, Cody Bellinger of the Dodgers. And then right field, Mookie Betts of the Dodgers. So the Padres and the Dodgers kind of dominates the all-star voting. But that'll do it for this one. Next episode, we will start the month of July with Houston in a four-game home series. We'll probably watch that Sunday one since it's on Able Network. 
And then we'll go to the Tampa Bay Rays. We'll go to the Trop for the first time this season to battle them. Uh, but that will do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching this June recap. Can't wait to get into the month of July tomorrow and on Indians Week here on the channel. Make sure you drop a like and subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next one.